Recently, the quarterback of the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers, suffered a season-ending Achilles tendon injury only four plays into the season. Brutal for Jets fans and fans of the NFL in general, like myself. But did you know this injury happens in dogs and cats and has a very different but also very unique type of clinical presentation? So in this video, we're going to use this opportunity to talk about Achilles tendon injuries in dogs and cats. But before we do that, guys, if you please don't mind smashing that like and subscribe button to help grow the channel. The bigger the channel gets, the more videos I can make and the bigger videos I can make. I'd really like to do that and get as much good information out there as I possibly can. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so to start with, what is the Achilles tendon? The Achilles tendon in pets is referred to with a more generic name called the common calcaneal tendon. The common calcaneal tendon is made up of multiple tendons from several different muscles of the hind limb. The main components include the superficial digital flexor muscle and tendon, the gastrocnemius tendon, and the combined tendon of the gracilis, semitendinosus, and biceps femoris muscles. These muscles, tendons, and bone at which they attach play an important role in maintaining normal posture while standing and maintenance of a normal gait. Tension applied to the common calcaneal tendon via contraction of these muscles results in extension of the tarsocrural joint, which in turn leads to flexion of the digits or the toes. In other words, the entire apparatus allows a dog or cat or any other animal to stand with normal posture and walk normally. Now, all muscles need nerves to function normally, and this is no exception. Can you guess what nerve innervates these muscles? I'll give you a second. Have figured it out yet? If you said sciatic nerve, you are correct. These muscles are all innervated by branches of the sciatic nerve, which originates from the lower portions of the spinal cord. It's important to note that any problem that damages or causes loss of function of the sciatic nerve, its branches, or the muscles and tendons themselves can result in weakness of varying qualities that we'll show here coming up. So how is the Achilles tendon injured in dogs and cats? So in dogs and cats, much like people, trauma is the major source of injury. Trauma can obviously occur in any breed and can include lacerations, blunt force trauma, or severe stress stretching and pulling like what seemed to happen to Aaron Rodgers. Woo! Again, that does not look good. I'm sorry, Jets fans. There are some atraumatic causes as well that are likely chronic and degenerative in nature. These can occur in any dog or cat, but interestingly, Labradors and Dobermans seem to have this happen more commonly than other breeds. In addition, concurrent diseases like low thyroid, Cushing's disease, immune-mediated polyarthritis, and even the use of fluoroquinolone drugs like Batril can predispose dogs and cats to an Achilles tendon rupture. So how can you tell if your pet has an Achilles tendon injury? There are two characteristics characteristic gait abnormalities your pet can demonstrate depending on which specific anatomical structure has been injured. The first gait abnormality is referred to as a crab claw stance and occurs when the superficial digital flexor or SDF remains intact. This allows for continued flexion of the toes that occurs alongside a severe lameness and inability to bear weight on the limb. Again, with an intact SDF tendon, the toes are going to continue to flex despite the limb not working normally. This is a video from a colleague where you can see this dog demonstrating this crab claw stance. In addition to the crab claw, there are two other things to notice here. The first is how hesitant this dog is to put any weight on his paw at all, indicating something causing pretty significant pain. And the other is the marked swelling occurring over the calcaneus. These are both clues that point to an Achilles tendon injury. The other presentation of an Achilles tendon injury occurs from a complete rupture of the tendon. When this occurs, an animal loses all function from the tendon, resulting in what's called a plantigrade or a flat-footed stance. This is typically very obvious and very pronounced. Injury to the nerve from any problem can result result in selective loss of function of these groups of muscles. What separates a primary muscle or tendon injury is typically the presence of pretty obvious swelling in and around the hock. Once the problem is localized to the Achilles tendon and hock, i.e. the dog and cat version of an ankle, a series of tests may be performed to evaluate the tendon and the joint to determine the best course of treatment. There are a few different diagnostic modalities to choose from and they are as follows. The first is radiographs or x-rays. X-rays allow for evaluation of the ankle joint tarsus and the calcaneus bone, which is the bone where the tendon attaches, to determine whether there is concurrent injury, the quality of the bone, or any arthritis associated with the degenerative disease. X-rays are somewhat limited and they're pretty much only able to show really obvious bone abnormalities, so there's other imaging modalities that might be needed too, such as ultrasound. Ultrasound is another modality that allows for direct visualization of the Achilles tendon in order to determine the extent and the type of injury that is occurring as well. Another form of imaging that could be used is a CT scan. This is considered a form of advanced imaging that allows for more detailed and three-dimensional evaluation of the ankle joint and the associated bones. If there's a large degree of bone or joint trauma associated with an Achilles tendon rupture, your vet may discuss this with you prior to treatment. And the final form of imaging that may be employed for your pet is my personal favorite, 
MRI. MRI really is just the best. MRI is a form of advanced imaging that can be used to further evaluate the tendons, ligaments, and soft tissues in and around the joint, as well as the Achilles tendon itself. It allows the best visualization of these soft tissue structures. MRI wins in regards to soft tissue detail and would likely be used in cases where clinical signs are maybe more subtle and difficult to diagnose with exam and other forms of imaging, and it may also be used to help with surgical planning. In this MRI of a dog with an Achilles tendon rupture from a case report, you can clearly see the contrast uptake in the region of the injury represented by the white or hyperintense areas pointed to by the arrows. In this image of an MRI from a German short haired pointer with a six week old Achilles tendon rupture, you can see some of the relevant anatomy outlined previously. Take special note of the area within the red bracket and the blue lines. The blue lines represent the various tendons that make up the Achilles tendon, and in this example, the blue line labeled A is seen abruptly disrupted from its attachment to the tuber calcanei labeled E. In other words, that tendon is supposed to connect all the way down to that bone. Ultimately, your vet will walk you through what diagnostics are indicated and why. Also, this type of injury is something that your primary vet may not be totally comfortable treating and performing surgery on, and so they may recommend referral to a board-certified surgeon. These are vets who specialize in orthopedic and soft tissue surgery and have many, many, many years of advanced training beyond vet school to achieve this level of expertise. These training years are also very brutal, in case you didn't know. Now, treatment for an Achilles tendon rupture can vary between external coaptation like slings and splints and orthotics and things like that to surgery of various forms. Surgery can involve attaching healthy ends of the tendon back together with suture, mesh, or other types of grafts. Most repairs of the tendon need to be protected after surgery to allow the tendon to heal. A variety of options exist for immobilizing the lower limb, including casts, splints, custom orthotics, temporary screws, linear external skeletal fixators, or a circular fixator as seen in the image below. Another form of surgery Surgery is what's called arthrodesis. Now, if there is complete disruption or tearing of the Achilles tendon or severe damage to the ankle joint, fusion of the joint may be required to return to nor more normal function. This entails stabilizing the joint in what is a normal standing position using orthopedic implants like plates, screws, and pins, and allowing the joint to fuse into one long bone. Joint fusion eliminates pain and lameness, but does not restore normal flexion and extension of the joint. Aftercare usually includes very restricted activity for about six to 12 weeks after surgery, as well was protecting the surgery repair with the aforementioned options for that time. Complete healing of the tendon can take a total of 9 to 12 months. If your veterinary surgeon has applied external support, regular appointments may be required to maintain and adjust the external supportive structure. Oftentimes, some element of physical therapy, either at home through the guidance of your surgeon or with a certified veterinary physical therapist, is indicated in order to reestablish an appropriate range of motion in the tarsus or ankle. Potential complications of surgery include re-rupture or breakdown of the surgical site itself. These can often be avoided with appropriate post-operative care and activity restriction of your pet. The prognosis is usually very good for the majority of injuries. Between 70 to 90% or so of dogs have a good to excellent return of function after surgery. But like I said before, it's very important to follow the activity restriction guidelines set forth by your veterinary surgeon. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that summary of Achilles tendon injury in dogs and cats. Let's all wish Aaron Rodgers a speedy recovery. And Jets fans, welcome to the Zach Wilson era. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the video or if you have any ideas for me to make other videos. Happy to hear those too. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.